There's a familiar feeling along the banks of the old Raritan. A slight chill in the air and a buzz in the night. Football has returned to the state of New Jersey. For the fans, a weekly gathering of friends and family. And for the high school all-stars, now wearing the scarlet and white of Rutgers, another chance to play under the Friday night lights. A prime time matchup on a big stage with even bigger stakes as the Scarlet Knights kick off the season against the eighth ranked team in the country. Browning under pressure, set loose. This week on the season premiere of Our Football with Chris Ash. We sit down with head coach Chris Ash to recap game one of the 2017 season. We're there for the opening of the brand new, state-of-the-art Marco Battaglia practice complex, and we'll take you through the gates. These will be the best practice facilities in the Big Ten, and I think people hear that and they think maybe you're exaggerating a little bit, and then they come up and they see it and they say, truly, these are amazing. And we'll look ahead to the 2017 season and the next game on the Scarlet Knights schedule. This week on the season premiere of Our Football with Chris Ash. Come on, man, get, get that ball. There you go. Tenacity. Time, a lot of time, a lot of effort. Play extremely hard. You know, be consistent. Aggressive. A bunch of fire and passion. I represent New Jersey. I chase that dream that we all want. want to hear that cannon as you score. Touchdown! Atmosphere is electric. Steam gets real loud. He demands, you know, perfection. When he asks for something, he wants it to be done. Try to get to the dot. You quit. To know that our program is on the rise. There's only the top of the tosses there. Touchdown, catch. This program going to another level. Let's go! Go! How would you describe the energy and the excitement around this program? Well, there's a lot of energy. You know, you look uh, right now what we're doing. Uh, the players love to come in this building. They work extremely hard. Uh, they have great relationships with their coaches. They have great relationships with the other players in their unit. Uh, but they come in full of energy and excited to, to go to work. They know they're going to get work extremely hard. Uh, they've embraced our standards, and uh, they know that uh, what we're doing is what's best for them to make them the best that they can be. We talked a lot last year about guys buying in and you felt that they were doing that and doing that with conviction. Do you think that's carried forward to year two? Uh, absolutely, and I think even more so. You know, uh, we're all measured uh, based off our actions and not our words. And it's easy for somebody to say, well, I buy in, I'm bought in. But do your actions re actually reflect that? And I can tell you right now with our football team, if I measure them based on their actions, the buy-in is really high. Uh, again, it starts with their attitude and their effort and, and the way that I see them walk into this building every single day to attack their job. I'm excited to, to see it and uh, um, I think our buy-in is, is exceptional right now and uh, it's going to continue to grow as we move forward, but I like where we're at. So in year two, what is your vision? Is it the same as it was when you first came here? Yeah, it, it is. Um, you know, everyone wants to talk about wins and losses, and, and we, we, we get it. You need to win in this business. It's a results-based business, but how we do it, I think, uh, is the most important thing that we want to focus on. And, and I want our football team just to get better every single day and every single week and play our best at the end. Do you have a timetable for success, or do you feel that if you follow the proper guidelines and if you follow your map for success that that will take care of itself yeah I, you know i don't have a timetable at all um, when you talk about trying to build the culture that you want um, you want to be able to get players to behave and prepare and perform a certain way and you got to recruit guys uh, again that, that fit your characteristics i'd say those those things take two to three years to get done 
uh, but I'm not putting a timetable that says it's, we're going to be here for two years and win, five years and win. We have a plan. Uh, we're going to stay on that plan, on that course. We're going to stay uh, uh, focused on what we're doing and how we want to do it, and the results will come. Hey, one D! Hey! This is High Point Solution Stadium, and this is the season premiere of our football with Chris Ash. I'm Bruce Beck. Coach, great to be back with you. Yeah, thanks for uh, coming back. It's one of the best moments of the week. <laughs> I don't know about that, but Coach, when we look at the Washington game, a heck of a football game for the Scarlet Knights, a lot of people said, this is progress, and yet you, after the game, said, I'm really disappointed. So how do you balance the two? Yeah, well, it was progress. Our, our team came out, and uh, if you're just looking to pass the eye test, we did. We looked better. We played better, but that's not what it's about. It's about getting the, the victory. What about the ferocity of your defense, especially in the first half? Yeah, first half, we played a great game. Uh, we got a little tired when they started going tempo in the third quarter. We, we struggled to get uh, some substitutions in and out and keep guys fresh, but uh, it was a great first game. Uh, again, there were, there were still too many mistakes to make it a great game. It was a good first game is probably the best way to describe it. Kyle Bolin, two touchdown passes, two interceptions, 24 for 34 for 178 yards. How do you evaluate his start? Just like everybody else, he did a good job in a lot of uh, the game. Uh, had two critical uh, errors where he tried to force the ball in certain situations and created turnovers. But he showed tremendous leadership and composure out on the field. He executed the offense the way we wanted him to execute it. He got guys lined up. Look at His touchdown pass to Janarian Grant, though, was right through a tight window. That was beautifully executed. Yeah, he had two touchdown passes, one to Janarian to start the game, one to, to uh, Decoven Bailey there at the end. And both of them were very uh, well-thrown balls. He threw a lot of uh, really good passes throughout the course of the game, but it started with that one to Janarian, which was an outstanding one in the red zone. In terms of your running game, you looked at your two different running backs. Do you feel like you're getting a little bit of different things from each guy? Yeah, really, we played three running backs in the game. We had Gus Edwards, who started the game. He's a big back. He's a physical back, but he's got good feet for his size. Rob Martin came in and, and provided a little bit more quickness and, and uh, speed and ran hard. And then uh, Raheem Blackshear, freshman, came in. and yeah, He's a little jitterbug back there, and he did a nice job, made uh, some people miss in, open, in the open field. So I really like our running back group right now when you, you factor Josh Hicks also into that group. I think we've got four running backs that can give us really good production throughout the year. Browning under pressure. Set loose. I mean, what an amazing play for Rutgers on a third down. Davis's sack was a play that ESPN showed over and over. What about the individual effort? Yeah, Davis always gives great effort. You know, we, we, we talk to the players all the time. If you go out and just consistently do your job, big plays are going to happen. That's that's what Davis does. Last year he had a, a fumble recovery uh, and they took it back for a touchdown against Indiana. It's just because he does his job and he does it extremely well and he does it consistently, big plays happen for that, that young man. Jerome Washington had six grabs in this game, the most by a tight end since Tyler Croft, who was a pretty good football yeah. player. To employ that type of weapon with your offense, what does it mean overall? Uh, I love us uh, being able to use tight ends, and Jerome is a great combination of a, a receiver and a blocker. He can do it both, and uh, he's going to have a phenomenal season for us, and, and he's going to have a great career here at Rutgers. You controlled the football. You had the ball for almost 40 minutes in this game. Is that a philosophy that you're going to continue to employ, or do you think that you'll allow the offense to open up a little as the season unfolds? Well, it's all based on, I mean, the offense will, is opened up. I mean, there's, but it's all based on the opponent that you play. What do they allow you to do? You know, they had a really good pass rush. They, they, they play a coverage, a deep third coverage where it keeps things in front of them. To be able to sit back there and play action, take shots, it takes time. Uh, and Washington doesn't give you a lot of time, and they don't let you get behind them very often. So I think we dominated the number of snaps that we, we got in that game, the time of possession, the third downs, the rushing yardage, a lot of positive things that went in our favor. But the number one thing is we just didn't get enough points. Chris, what did you think of the atmosphere for a home opener? I thought it was great. Uh, school's not back in session until uh, Tuesday, and uh, the fact that we had so many students here, it was great. The Scarlet Walk was the best it's been since I've been here. Uh, but I, I thought uh, for the Labor Day weekend, everyone's talking about going to the shore and all that stuff. We had a lot of people here, and it really made a difference in the environment and, and the way our players played. I really believe that. What did you learn about your football team in this first game? 
uh, that we have tremendous potential. I and mean, if we clean up the mental errors that we had in critical situations, I, I like the, um, the talent that we have. I like the toughness. I like the competitive spirit, the brotherhood. Uh, they, they, they didn't get down when Washington had that punt return for a touchdown. Everyone's disappointed. It kind of sucks the air out of the stadium. But our players responded well. You know, that, that wasn't uh, necessarily the end of the game. We were still in a, in a great football game when we came out of that tunnel at, at halftime because of the way our players responded. I love that about them. So you lost to a team that was ranked number eight in the nation that went to the playoff last year. Do you think this is a good start in terms of going forward here? I know a loss never serves as a springboard, but is it a solid place to start in your mind? It is in some uh, regards. You know, again, none of us came here to be satisfied with uh, playing a, right. a, a top opponent close. That's not what we want to do. You know, uh, until I watched the, the film, I would have probably felt a little bit better about uh, uh, what we did. But when I watched the film and I see the missed opportunities that we had to actually go out and win that football game, that's what's so disappointing. But I am encouraged by what we did. We'll, we'll clean up the, the issues that we had. We had 22 new players take their first snap in a Rutgers uniform uh, Friday night. Uh, we'll clean up some of the issues that we had and hopefully go on and play some of our, our best football as we get into Big Ten play. Be honest, Chris, coaches are never happy, right? Uh, very few. <laughs> Can always play better. <laughs> when we come back on our football with Chris Ash, much more about the Scarlet Knights, and we'll look ahead to the next opponent. Stay with us. Rutgers fans, here's a chance for you to become even a bigger part of the program. We want to hear from you. So email us your questions and we'll use them on the show, Our Football with Chris Ash. change that phrase. Gifts and projects like this get us closer to where we want to be, but there are still many things to do. And on behalf of our staff, our tremendous group of players, I want to say thank you to everyone that made this a reality. Let's enjoy the celebration and go Knights. These will be the best practice facilities in the Big Ten. And I think people hear that and they think maybe you're exaggerating a little bit. And then they come up and they see it and they say, truly, these are amazing. The other shock was that we did it in five months. Uh, and I give great credit to uh, Tony Calcato, our chief operating officer, uh, and all the folks in facilities who worked really hard. It's going to be great for them um, to have a, a practice complex that they can go use uh, essentially year round. Um, we have uh, grass fields uh, there a year ago, it was basically grass on clay, and, and we couldn't use the grass. We were on turf. Uh, and that's not great for their bodies to practice on turf every single day. So the fact that we can actually go on grass fields and it's going to be off the charts, top of the line uh, grass fields. Right, right, right. Oh, there you go. Hey. Get on it. Here we go. Uh, the new facilities is great. You know, the practice field that we just received, um, you know, practicing on that football field is like, you know, you, you're excited to be out there because of all the new stuff that they got out there and just being out there with your brothers and especially, you know, it's just, you know, it's just great. Two fields that were put in that perfectly grassed, the draining the system so we can go out there whenever. Uh, it's just been very helpful and uh, it just makes us feel like we're, you know, deserve to be in the Big Ten. You're on the cliff, man. Don't back up. Yeah. Hustle back. One more. Good job, man. Go. 
So there's no question that this makes a difference in the way the players think about our program, think about our commitment to them. Uh, you carry yourself with another a sense of pride, uh, a little bit of swagger. Uh, you go up there and they know it's a safe place. They know it's um, a place where they can really test themselves uh, fully. They don't have to worry about the conditions of the field. Uh, it's the best of everything for them. So um, just like our, our new weight room, uh, the students uh, look at that. They go around with a sense of pride. Their chest sticks out a little bit further than it has in the past. Uh, and that's not just because of the weights they've been lifting. This segment of the show is sponsored by RWJ Barnabas Health. Hi, I'm Dr. Yvette Rooks, Chief Medical Officer, RWJ Barnabas Health, Sports Medicine at Rutgers. And I'm here to talk to you about health tip number one. Um, fall is coming, and fall means the weather's going to change a little bit. And as you're out there exercising, remember to dress in layers. And so as you sweat, you can take layers off or put layers on. We don't want you to overheat because you can still suffer from heat illness, although the fall weather is coming. We're only, we only go as far as we go, all right? So let's have a fun night. Let's go out there and show them who we are. Hey, let it all up. We're out tonight, huh? Some dogs. Let it all up. We're out tonight. Some dogs. High Point Solution Stadium, that's where the action will be this week as Rutgers welcomes Eastern Michigan in their second game of the season. Coach, back to work. It's never easy. And Eastern Michigan, they reached the bowl last year for the first time since 1987. Yeah, it's uh, really a, a program with a lot of confidence right now. They've got a lot of experience coming back. Chris Creighton, head football coach, is an outstanding coach. He's done a tremendous job taking that program to a bowl game for the first time in nearly 30 years. Uh, got a great quarterback. They throw it around well, and uh, they're well coached. So it's going to be a challenge for us. This kid, Brogan Roback, who you talked about, their quarterback has thrown for over 5,000 yards in his career there, and he looks to use a lot of different weapons. Yeah. So that puts a lot of pressure on your on your defense, not just the secondary, but everyone. Yeah, we've got to be able to put pressure on them. We've got to be able to match routes at the linebacker position. We've got to be able to keep vertical control with our secondary, not allow them to get behind us and get deep shots. They're really good at that, and that's what they thrived on last year, and we've got to make sure we keep them in front of us. They're 1-0. They beat Charlotte 24-7 in the opener. But this is more about you getting ready for your second game. So what do you do this week in terms of getting ready? Well, we, we have a consistent routine and preparation that we uh, go through regardless of the opponent. I mean, this is a big game for us. It's another non-conference game that we hope to win. Uh, and to do that, we've got to go out and prepare uh, exceptionally well. And I thought we did that going into the Washington game. We have to do it better because we have to eliminate some mental errors. But the focus is on us. Uh, you know, Eastern Michigan's a great team. We know uh, the opponent, but we have to focus on our preparation and go out and have a great week. Go again. Do it again. And in terms of your quarterback, Kyle Bolin, another chance to get more reps and get a little more experience, and hopefully that means positive things for the offense. Yeah, absolutely. For all those new players, it's, it's opportunity to continue to get more reps, clean things up. Uh, we should see a lot more uh, poise by all those players as they go through the week because they've already played in that first game and got those jitters out of them, you know, so I'm excited to see that improvement as much as anything. You had a wonderful crowd for the home opener. Are you looking for that follow through this week? Yeah, I want it every week. You know, I'm hoping that we can create it, uh, you know, the type of team that people want to come watch every single week. And, you know, right now everyone talks about the crowds and I, I want it every week, you know, where it's just standard. And that's that's uh, what they expect when they come to Rutgers. Hey, smile today. Smile. Have a great day. Enjoy being on the practice field with all of your teammates. Come on, man, get, get that ball. There you go. A little volleyball with it. You're on the cliff, man. Don't back up. Guys, get running, man. Let's go. 
Game rough, go! Do you have enough time between weeks to get ready for the next game, or do you always feel like there's a pressure there? Uh, you, you never have enough time. As a coach, you, you <laughs> I always... I never have enough time in my life. Yeah, you, you preparation uh, goes all the way until the foot hits the ball, so, you know, we, we finished uh, the last week on Friday. We had some extra time to prepare for Eastern Michigan. Preparations will go all the way until the foot hits the ball, then it becomes a game of adjustments after that, and, but uh, you'd like to have more time. Coach, good luck to you. Yeah, thank you. That's it for this opening edition of Our Football with Chris Ash. We'll see you next week, everybody. With Chris Ash. Hey, Rutgers fans, here's a chance for you to become even a bigger part of the program. We want to hear from you. So email us your questions, and we'll use them on the show, Our Football with Chris Ash.